YouTube, how y'all doing today? I would say morning, but it ain't morning for me. It's almost three o'clock. I'm about to head to work, man. But I seen an interview. I want to talk about something. I seen an interview on uh, the Breakfast Club. It was about the infamous Harry O, the uh, the co-founder of Death Row, the guy that put up all the money to start Death Row. It was supposed to be Godfather Records. And I watched his interview today, man. It, it was a good interview, man. I uh, where his mindset was at, what he was, what he was talking about, how he wanted to uplift the, the neighborhood. He say how how he sit in prison all these years, and he watched cats go like in and out. Guys, young young guys go in and out, and having conversations with him, uh, you know, with where their mind state was at at the time, and what was going through his mind, and him being locked down all these years, how he could just sit back. And pay attention to the uh, how things were going on in the world. He had a lot of time to himself, and you know, uh, you know the maturity and how he spoke. You know what I'm saying, and you know how how important he was to to the start of Death Row Records, and how since he got out, him uh, him and Snoop's uh, partnership. You know, because you know I I remember Snoop Dogg had uh, had got the Death Row Records. He had uh, got a hold of it and. Uh, I guess his partner now is Harry O. You know, it brings it back around to one of the people who helped start it and one of the biggest artists to to eventually blow up the record label. You know, and make it what it was. And he was he, and he was talking about how he how he envisioned Death Row Records when he was when he was in prison. Because I guess he was already in prison when he gave uh, uh, Suge Knight and Dr. Dre all them the money to help start the label, and it was DOC was supposed to be a big part of the record label. He ended up getting pushed out. Like Harry O ended up getting pushed out after a little bit of time, you know, then they 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 put the lawyer in there. I forgot the lawyer name. It was his lawyer, David Kenner. Yeah, David Kenner was the lawyer. And how they end up pushing uh Harry O up out of the whole situation when he was furnishing the money. But I like seeing people get out, how they think, how his mindset is, what he's about. And he was giving his uh, reasons for voting for Donald Trump. And, you know, you vote for who you want to vote for. You know, everybody has their reasons to vote how they're going to vote. You know what I'm saying? Nobody should be uh, talked about or, or you know, uh, be felt to be, you know, have to be embarrassed or something by who they voted for. A lot of times people vote for what what person is pushing uh, or doing anything for their causes, what they believe in and everything. And he said he's voting for Donald Trump and he says not what everybody believe in. You you know what I'm saying? You, you vote for who you want to vote for. But he's voting for who he's voting for because a lot of the things he was doing for the community, you know, like the, and he was saying about the other law that got passed where when a person that did so much time, you can kind of, you know, you can like he. I think he did 35 years, and they, they can say like, man, he didn't did enough time. You know, he didn't did he didn't did too much time. Let me go and let him out, get him out. And I think that was one of the big laws that uh, I think Obama had passed that law like when he was getting out, and I think Donald Trump ended up letting him out. So he say that's who, that's where his vote going to because he said not only that he's voting for him because he let him out. He believe in a lot of the things that uh <clears throat> he's doing. And he sent him a package of different things he wanted to do. And he say, uh, Donald Trump, you know, he got, got at him, you know what I'm saying, got back to him. And, you know, they, I guess they trying to make something happen with that. So he said that's where his vote going. But I don't really care about the politician part of it, you know, the, uh, the politic part of it. I'm just saying how a man do that much time. And he got real emotional when he was talking about uh, his community and things like that. And, uh... And I know a lot of times, you know, uh, the Breakfast Club be strict, straight Democrat, you know, so they, they, they push their narrative where that, that's that's where, you know, where they vote going. And, and it was cool to see them listen to the guy and don't try to change what he was thinking or how he felt. You know what I'm saying? And I, I can't wait to see the documentary on his life because it's going to be a dope documentary because, you know, you know, he was one of he used to do plays back in the day and he put Denzel Washington in one of his first plays, you know what I'm saying? So. That just takes you back. And look what Denzel Washington is today. So that's a big part of history and how, how he handled business, how he was thinking back in the day to uh, invest 
in certain things and what Death Row could have been if he would have been out. And uh, he was asking about Snoop and Tupac. He, he was saying how his wife Lydia was, uh, she when she first seen Snoop, how his melodies was and everything, like she knew he was going to be a star. And I think Tupac was already doing his thing. I, you know, before he got with Death Row, you know, Tupac was already Tupac. You know, he probably wasn't a mega star that Death Row ended up making him. You know, so but he was already a star. You can already see that light in Tupac. And he was talking about how Tupac used to work and all that. But man, I would I can't wait to see that documentary. He say he working on a documentary. It's a documentary on him. He got a documentary coming out on DOC. I would love to see that documentary how one guy shaped a big part of West Coast hip hop and he's from he's from uh Texas, from Dallas. And uh Dr. Dre, you know, but he got a documentary on Snoop. DOC, DOC and himself, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think they dropped a movie a minute ago with Tyrese in it, talking about what was going on during the times of, you know, that kind of music in the, in the West Coast and Death Row era and all that. But man, it was pretty dope seeing him, how wise the guy was, you know, and how he spoke, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so mature, you know what I'm saying, to see a dude can go through time and, 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 and still be plotting and planning how he's going to move and what he got planned for his life after he get out of prison. But that was pretty dope. And uh, it was a dope interview. If y'all go watch it, you know what I'm saying? It was a good interview. And I can't wait to see the guy documentary. But, man, tell me how y'all feel about Harry O. You know what I'm saying? The godfather, the dude who started one of the greatest record labels of all time and what Death Row could have been. Cause he said if uh if if uh Shook would have ran Death Row like he wanted to be ran at a certain time and then put this certain kind of element in there that Death Row probably would have been striving right now and they would have probably still be at the top of the game. But how he ran it, he ran it like a real Death Row. And uh, Harry O say the meaning behind him naming it Death Row was giving giving people an outlook on how what you don't want to deal with, what you don't want to go through. Cause he was looking at it from uh. Uh, a point of view of he's in prison and you don't want to do this but man tell me how y'all feel about that man like comment subscribe on my video and if you leave a comment i will get back with you or get at you however you want it man but uh i'm getting there with my channel man so keep supporting and i appreciate the support man y'all have a wonderful day